processes, negotiation, consultation, information, communication. What format would they take? What, what kind of, what would I experience if that was happening? Okay. Um, firstly, let me just briefly go through what the differences are okay. between negotiation, consultation, etc. Um, so negotiation and or collective consultation process, uh, as we said, between trade union, works council uh, and or employee representative group members would be over proposed changes to uh, the employment contract mm -hmm. uh, and specifically those that are detailed within a collective bargaining agreement or union recognition agreement. In this situation, the trade union and works council representatives represent the impacted, sorry, represent the interests of impacted employees uh, under the terms of the respective uh, collective bargaining or union recognition agreement. Um, as already said, Joe, this is a legal requirement to follow uh, as per the um, threshold numbers and timeframes that we've uh, spoken about. Um, an information or communication process um, would be where the company uh, representatives um, inform or communicate directly with impacted employees themselves over any proposed contractual changes. Okay. So typically, uh, Joe, in the UK, in this situation, it would involve, um, firstly, it wouldn't uh, be collective consultation because of the numbers involved. So it would be 19 employees or less. Um, and uh, as already said, um, it's not a legal requirement in this specific situation to follow collective consultation. But that said, and just to ensure that you're doing the best thing by the impacted employees, and to avoid grievances or litigation, it is still best practice uh, to follow a thorough and meaningful consultation process uh, in this situation. Um, moving on then, Joe, to what these meetings look like mm -hmm. and who actually partakes in them. Um, firstly, um, where again you're proposing to make changes or it's part of an annual negotiation process involving a collective bargaining agreement um, the company would set up uh, an agreed series of meetings between company representatives uh, and also trade union works council and employee representative group members where the company would detail the proposed changes importantly the rationale behind these changes demonstrating that they're reasonable uh, and with the end result being um, a view to seeking agreement on them from the representatives that we've just detailed representing their impacted employees in this situation joe company representatives at such meetings would be from the hr department yeah. uh, and looking at the um, what we call the centers of excellence within a HR department would normally involve uh, an employee relations professional uh, together with business line managers so they typically would be your company representatives the role of the um, trade union works council or employee representative group members uh, is then to act as a conduit um, in feeding back the company proposals um, to their um, impacted employees mm -hmm. uh, and then seeking um, their views, their feedback any, and any concerns they might have about those um, specific proposed changes um, and then feeding those back to the company uh, at, at, at a further agreed meeting. So would that also give them the opportunity to maybe suggest some mitigations around the changes being made or, 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 or improvements from their perspective? Would, would that be where that would happen? Uh, yes, Joe, that is yeah. correct. Yes, absolutely. Um, and one further thing to mention, um, you quite often outside of the collective consultation uh, level or forum, uh, you quite often get employees who may have more detailed concerns or questions 
uh, about the proposed changes being made that they feel they want to ask of company uh, representatives directly. So in this situation, an employee is entitled to have one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings with company representatives. Um, and in this situation, Joe, they are entitled and it is best practice for them, should they so desire, uh, to be accompanied by the Works Council or a trade union or an employee representative group member. It's been a really, really useful conversation, Stephen. Uh, you know, I think logically you approach it as a project. So understand the scope, identify the resources required to do it, what the timelines are, who's going to be impacted, get some real structure and rigidity, which um, is always a great place to start with something like this. But I guess the other thing that is the world has thrown a curveball. Often when you're going to be doing things like this, in the previous COVID world, it would have been face to face. But now with people working remotely, I guess that's that's meaning that a lot of these changes are going to have to take place via conference call via Zoom or whatever the platform is. What 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 difference would that make, Stephen? Uh, well, Joe, uh, you're you're exactly right there. Um, in the um, uh, in the COVID world, and uh, from my recent uh, work experiences, uh, and again going back to the. Um, large change management project that I led yeah. uh, from an employee relations perspective. Um, when it came to um, um, speaking with um, works councils, trade union representatives um, and business line managers, uh, all of these conversations were done uh, using either Zoom or Microsoft Teams. Um, and uh, as you can probably imagine, uh, the screen got really quite crowded with, in some cases, up to uh, 20 or 25 people being involved. Um, I think um, if I were um, a business manager or a HR professional, Joe, in this situation, uh, I can't emphasize how important it is to uh, have a script or a meeting format or a detailed um, PowerPoint presentation covering the issues that you are going to be speaking with or covering uh, during the meeting with these um, with different types of um, uh, people. So for me, that was with um, ER professionals, works councils, trade union reps. Um, and where with this project, where the changes were agreed to, um, the, uh, the company uh, undertook a twofold process where in parts of the world employees, sorry, where in parts of the world uh, expressed employee consent or written employee consent was needed to uh, validate the um, changes to the benefits uh, that, they were, uh, that they were in receipt of. This was either done by um, physically sending out a hard copy letter to their home address or where that wasn't practical to um, send the letter to them and obtain an electro uh, electronic signature accordingly uh, uh, as, um, uh, as, as, as in the same way uh, that the, uh, you would sign a hard copy letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that, that was, that's been my experiences, Joe, of um, using technology around changes to terms and conditions of employment uh, since COVID has come to light. And, and those also raised another couple of points in my mind as I think about it. I mean, any anything like this, if you're going to be sitting down with a group of individuals and taking them through a plan of the proposal, it kind of makes sense to spend time preparing for that, like you said in advance, thinking, what are people going to be wanting to know? What questions and concerns are they going to have? Um, what, what are the what are the things that we know about that they'll ask us and prepare to to answer those questions, but also to have time in so that if there are any that you haven't anticipated, at least you've got the opportunity to deal with that. Mm -hmm. But equally, the other side of that for me is doing negotiations, doing communication via a virtual platform such as what we're doing today. 
um, if it's if it's a big message that you've got to get across to people, people take that message in in different speeds and in different ways. Some people can read it and get the message in. Some people are happy to talk it through and get the message in. Some people need to just absorb it reflect quietly afterwards and then may come back with questions so that's something I guess other people may need to consider when they are doing some consultations in this way right yeah the uh, final points uh, just really to reinforce that um, what uh, any changes that the company are proposing to make involving the employment contract uh, that as said they are reasonable in nature and to ensure that um, the aforementioned processes are followed where they are legally required to be followed uh, and to prevent litigation and damage reputation to yeah. the company um, for, for not following said processes. And that's, the, the, and that's probably as important as anything. Uh, companies work really hard and people in companies work really hard to create great environments to work in to make a mistake in doing something like that would be just so damaging absolutely so hopefully this short conversation will have helped um what would you advise anyone out there listening to do if, if they have a question over their head Stephen? uh well joe uh, as you said um i hope as well that um this conversation um uh, has given uh, business leaders um yeah. Uh, points to think about. Um, if um, a business leader seeing this um, in, uh, interview uh, wants to um, talk with us or is thinking of making any changes um, and wants further information, um, I'd like to invite them to get in contact with us uh, here at Work Horizons. Uh, and they can do this um, either via our LinkedIn page or um, our, our, our company website, uh, www.workhorizons.com. And I think, um, you know, this is clearly, as we've said, Joe, this is a big step for any business to undertake. Um, and I, I really can't reinforce, and as I've seen from my own professional career, how key and important it is to get these processes right. Couldn't agree more, Stephen. Thank you very much. So that's Stephen Morgan. Thank you for your time this afternoon. Um, again, just to repeat Stephen's message, if anyone wants to talk things over with us, contact us through our LinkedIn page or our, via our website, workhorizons.com. We'll be happy to take any questions and see if we can get you um, in, in a better place with your thinking. So Stephen, thanks for your time today. Thank and you. thanks for anyone who's joining us and listening in. And, and hopefully we'll have been of interest. Thanks.